afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time of day it is for you, everyone. I'm Genesee from Good Shepherd Entertainment, the publisher of The Eternal Cylinder, and we're thrilled to welcome you to the first in a series of live streams with the amazing members of Ace Team, the awesome game developers of The Eternal Cylinder. So I'm pleased to introduce you to Carlos, the game director, uh, a hugely ambitious game for the whole team. So say hi to Carlos, everyone in chat. Hopefully you can start posting your questions now and we'll be taking them to ask to Carlos in a little bit. So in the meantime, welcome, Carlos. Uh, can you uh, tell everyone a little bit more about the game? Sure. Well, uh, brief introduction. I'm Carlos Bordeo, uh, the game director for the Eternal Cylinder. Uh, this uh, project has a little bit of a backstory to it. Um, several years ago, I think around 2014, 2015, I don't remember the exact date. Uh, I started working on a kind of a personal prototype of a project um, that I did with a colleague, a programmer, Leonardo Benaucci. And uh, we started just uh, with this concept of the, uh, I had envisioned this concept of, of this giant cylinder, which was uh, crushing the, the, the whole world. And uh, the other clear thing that we had was the, the little creature, the, the Trebon, which was just one in, in, in a nest at the time. And, and, and we did a fun little prototype, which later uh, people who started seeing it got more and more impressed with. And eventually, well, uh, after all these years of work, it, it has become uh, the project it, it, it has. Um, at the beginning, it was not exactly clear where we were going to take the project to, what was the direction in terms of many of the game mechanics were things that were later developed as we decided to expand the game and, 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 and make it into what it was. At, at the beginning it was more a mix of like a, almost a tech demo mixed with the artistic uh, experience, but it, it wasn't very clear what that was going to be and later with Andres and Edmundo, my, my brothers and co-founders of the ACE team, we sat down and we started thinking about, well, what's this game going to be about? So uh, for those who don't know, Eternal Cylinder is a um, survival adventure game uh, where you uh, control this herd of little creatures called the Trebum. These, uh, they're like little heads with two feet and an elephant trunk that... Um, look kind of goofy uh, and in this alien world where which they live there's this massive giant uh, cylinder which is crushing everything and destroying everything in the world so it's a game about exploring uh, the world but also getting to understand uh, where this comes from what's going on and 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 yeah I, I think that's a simple summary of, of what the game is <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's a lot. I mean, it's been a really long journey for everyone. Yeah, it has. It's been a long cool. project. <laughs> and you just released a beta yesterday. So you want to tell everyone about the beta and how that's going? Are, are you sleeping? What's up with you? <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I stayed up late uh, checking feedback and also prior to the release of the beta, making sure everything's is good those it, 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 uh, uh, the launch of the beta you 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 pretty much feel a little bit like you're having a launch date so so there's a little bit of stress there uh, i was a little bit nervous to see how people would uh, receive the project and be super happy to see that uh, people are are enjoying the game and and, and liking it so yeah we we launched a, a beta which is pretty meaty one it, it actually contains even though it's the smaller, small, smaller, smallest chap chapter of the game, it actually is the full chapter one. Uh, so there's plenty hours of gameplay with lots of secret stuff and uh, a lot of interactions and enemies and uh, pretty large environment. So um, yeah, I'm pretty excited uh, about the, the the whole beta. Awesome. Uh, Memplex is telling you, Carlos, your volume is low. You're gonna have to eat that mic. I'm sorry, man. I oh, okay, know. I'll do as much yeah. as I can. But I already tried to up the <laughs> the volume of the microphone, and I can't figure out why. So 
I'll just do my best to speak louder. Yell. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of feedback um, in chat right now. Welcome all you guys. So glad to see you. Straw Blaze says, I played the beta with friends and we enjoyed it. I'd name each of the Trepums one of my friends watching the stream. So they named him after all their friends, which is awesome. Cool. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, without spoiling anything, and, and by the way, we're going to link the beta. If you don't know what this is about, um, please visit the website and you can sign up for a free code and uh, get that. Uh, they're asking me when the next beta codes are going to go out. We just sent one today. The second round went out today, uh, this morning. So if you signed up before this morning, you should have a code in your email. If not, the third round will go out as soon as we reach the threshold for codes. So uh, sign up and we'll make sure you get one before the beta ends on March 25th. Uh, so if anyone's in the game and they find something that they'd like to share with you, whether it's feedback or if it's a bug or anything, how should they go about doing that? Yeah, so this is this is something that we added to the game, which is pretty cool. Um, thanks to Good Shepherd, because they actually suggested that we put it in the game. Um, <laughs> if you press F8 uh, at any moment in the game, uh, you'll get this screen which pops up and uh, you can write a comment. So this can be to give feedback, this can be to report a bug, if you have any sort of issue, if you have a whatever case, you whatever you want to report. And what this does is that it automatically sends uh, to to our way uh, not, not only the description of what was written, but we also get a save point of the moment it, this was done, as well as as um, files with, which allow us to access the, the this, this this game file and see whatever might be pertinent to the uh, what we need to to see. So so it's a very valuable function, uh, which we we can use to later see what, for instance, if someone clipped through the floor, maybe check that part of the set, the, the, the environment and see if there's something strange there but yeah it's it, it if you want to use that yeah please awesome okay so we're gathering questions in chat go, guys go ahead and ask if you want to uh share anything with carlos we can ask that live now i've also uh got some questions from our discord um, a lot of people are in there right now talking uh, very excitedly about the game so um I'm gonna read some of those, I guess. So the first one is about beta. Um, is beta only available in English? Uh, a couple of people are asking. So can you talk about that and then languages for launch, all that stuff? Yeah, it's only in English because of the localization pass of the game hasn't gone full localization. We reached a certain point uh, in localization, but it's very typical during development that you'll have uh, uh, the whole game go through a localization, but as you're going through iterations of development, uh, big portions of the text get changed. Uh, and that can be pretty late into development. So the final pass of localization is never done until you're almost there at the very end of the, of, of the process. So if we would have allowed the game to have the additional languages, the problem that we would have had is that it would be very likely that many languages would have had so too many errors, and we would have spent a lot of time having to disregard a lot of uh, reports about uh, incorrect uh, localization. But fear not, this game will be localized to FX, which English, French, uh, German, uh, Spanish, I think uh, Portuguese, uh, Russian, but a, a bunch of languages, yes. Cool. Okay, so a lot of people are wanting to stream and share, and, and we're going to do uh, on Twitter at Eternal Cylinder, we're going to do a Trebum appreciation post soon where hopefully everyone will share screenshots of all their fav their favorite Trebum family members. But um, for people that want to stream, is this under NDA or can they just share whatever they want to share? No, you can share whatever you want. We're happy to have people sort of post whatever they want. Uh, this is a beta where everyone can access uh, the beta uh, as long as there's enough keys. Um, so yeah, yeah, feel free to share as, uh, anything you want. Good. El Fideo Rubio, which is an awesome name and I'm gonna say it over and over, uh, asks, what was your biggest fear in terms of design when coming up with the game? 
Wow, uh, that's a very good question and something we actually tackled with for a very, for a substantial amount of time during development. So um, the core design of the game, if, if you were to go back and look at the design document of the game, you could, um, you would be able to see that there was the, the concept of the towers and the cylinder and uh, constantly moving. There's, there's one of the key aspects. At the very beginning in the game, the cylinder was moving uh, almost all the time. And we would uh, make it slower because it would be too oppressing. And eventually we would come up to realize that it wasn't a threat anymore because people could almost basically ignore it. And as soon as we started speeding it up again, then we would find ourselves with a situation in which uh, people felt like this time pressure which was uncomfortable and people uh, it, it, it wasn't it, there, there was never a, a, a perfect balance so in the in the original concept the cylinder was moving much much more of the actual game time than than it is now and though the towers did exist as a uh, as a way of stopping it it, it, it didn't come uh, until after quite a while of uh, exploration and, and testing with the design because it's, it's, it's such a different design to what you see in regular game progression that we came up with this more okay we need to give the players uh, pauses where the players can really stop and explore the game freely without any fears that the cylinders is either gonna crush them and uh, there is also a pretty interesting anecdote with regards to the, um, the faster speeds of the cylinder. So I remember uh, I was testing the, the cylinder. At, at the beginning, we had it move kind of, s usually move pretty slow, not that fast. But we had in, in, in the code, it would kind of ramp up speed until it reached uh, a certain <laughs> yes. distance yes. to the player. And we had a bug uh, where it kept on moving faster and then faster and faster. <laughs> and I was playing the game without, without, I was totally used to the kind of slower cylinder. And suddenly I look, look back and it's like, whoa, this thing is chasing me. It's just gonna, you start running away. And, and the sensation that, pro, that, that what, what that did, like, uh, like the feeling you got from like, wow, this thing is really moving much faster than you expect. And I, I really need to get to a safety spot was one of the uh, really interesting points which made us experiment a lot more with faster cylinder speeds. And, and I think some people will come kind of surprised to see uh, how, actually, how fast it actually mows down uh, the terrain. And, and that did come into play as also a, a pretty big technical challenge because it's different having to destroy like your entire kind of destructible procedural world at a kind of slow rate. As soon as you start doing everything faster, that means you're destroying at a much higher rate, more physical objects, your creatures are all starting to react to the AI more in simultaneous, whether it was maybe uh, l less frequent, but that, that, that meant also that was a technical challenge, a pretty big one, just, just by changing one simple number. Yeah, yeah. I love early versions of the game. That's funny. Um, one of the things I remember playing it early is that I get motion sick, but you seems like you really worked a lot to make that mitigated. And when I play now, I don't feel that worry anymore. Um, I don't feel it. And a lot of people are asking in Discord about camera controls and XY axes and some things like that that they'd like to customize a little more. Um, can you talk a little bit more about the fix that you're working on and how that's going to work in the final game? Okay, so yeah, we did obviously miss one pretty evident uh, option that we have had in all our other games. And usually, when you're porting from, when you're doing another game, uh, some people think that you're you, you can just simply the menus and some some of the graphic options and and the the PC settings screen is kind of easy to port from one place to the other. But it usually, a new project means rewriting everything from scratch. So the y-axis invert option which is definitely missing is something that will be in the final game it's just usually that you have so many aspects of the game that need to be uh 
worked out that uh, some get some some aspects of technically get more pro uh, higher priority than other aspects. And in this case, the UI Juan Juan Briones, who's in charge of uh, working on the UI, this has been a huge project for him because th this game has so many different layers of different UI, the in-game UI, the menus, the the map, the there, there's so many things going on. So, so yeah, it will be in there. At the moment, we did, uh, Genesee, I did give you, uh, we're, we're providing a quick workaround in the form of a ini file that you can replace. So that will rever reverse your, your, your y-axis. So if you're having that problem, uh, I so assume that's being posted somewhere in, in, in Discord. It's in Discord, yeah. Okay, so everyone cool. should... Yeah, everyone should look in Discord. It's pinned in the general channel. So if you're looking for that, the file is available for you there. Um, there'll be a, a link in chat here in, in Twitch for uh, Discord, but you can also just do a search for Eternal Cylinder and you'll find us there and you can pick that up real quick. Yeah, but that won't be the final solution. We will have it in the options menu. Nice. Um, Bloodhorn has a question, and um, first of all, they're they're appreciating the beta. They want you to know that, and they're asking, what are the inspirations behind the nightmarish creatures in the game? Okay, I'll, I'll switch screens so that people can see a bit, little, little bit more of the gameplay and maybe the the, the art. Um, yeah. Um, so at the very beginning, the 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 the, the project. Uh, the original elements, which are the cylinder and the trebom, I would say more the cylinder came from a, my personal exploration of surreal art that we were looking at a lot of that um, during the development of Xenoclash. Well, we're, 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 our studio is most well known for the Xenoclash and Rock of Ages series. And at the time when we were working on the second Xenoclash, we, we had gone pretty deep into looking a lot of uh, surreal and uh, fantasy kind of uh, artwork. So what, what we wanted to do with the creatures and everything is that we really wanted uh, people to feel like they were on an alien planet, um, but to really, really, really feel it. Like, like we didn't want the animals to f look like, okay, this looks like maybe a lion and I switch the head of the lion for, I don't know, a crocodile. So it looks like a croc gator or, uh, sorry, a lion gator or whatever. Uh, like we, we really wanted to, to explore different types of uh, ways in which creatures would actually move. So for instance, the, the Tongo Groth, the ton we call him the Melter. I never remember the actual names. Uh, sorry, Jonas. Jonas, the writer, he he came up with the names, but we we call them with the developer names. So for me, it's the Melter, the big one, the big green ball with two legs that sort of spits acid. We call him the Melter because he melts people with that. He mel melts creatures with the with, with the acid. So in that case, for instance, the it's he's bipedal, but he actually also moves with this large sort of sp sphere that moves uh, like it's like his belly I don't know maybe some people haven't seen him in action action in the game but there's a moment in which the creature when you start running away from it it sort of gains speed and with the running motion that it has with the two legs it's not fast enough so what it does is that it lifts both sort of legs become kind of like arms and it starts rolling so it can gain a lot more speed so that would allow us for instance to have a dual uh, like a, a situation in which the creature was able to do two forms of uh, approaching the player one in which it's slower and it sort of tries to spit acid at you and the other which it comes comes at you a little bit more like a wrecking ball uh, so I, I guess the, 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 the design process was always um, coming from the side of what, what's unique to the creature, what's, what it's going to do that's different to maybe from the regular game mechanics you would see in, in, in maybe another creature from another video game. But also uh, visually, what, what, what can we do to make it really feel so, like something alien that people haven't seen in, in, in other video games? 
So no bedtime stories from Carlos. Got it. Yeah. Carry the light. Okay, Fly Penguin asks, how did you guys come to the Trebum creature? Did their design change much in development? Um, the Trebum, uh, I answered this in, in Twitter the, the other day, so some, uh, um, I had, I, I, I usually, like, uh, I, I draw and make, like, little doodles and sketches of surreal creatures and stuff, and I usually draw, like, these little, uh, sometimes I drew eyeballs with two little legs, um, a mouth with two little legs, or a funny looking thing with two little legs, and as soon as I sort of came up with the elements of putting this little head with a trunk and two eyes, and it kind of felt like cute, kind of goofy, uh, it felt like something really interesting. And uh, a lot of people have asked me later if uh, it was originally inspired by Qbert. So the answer is no, not really. But uh, I did realize the similarity, similarity afterwards. So it was kind of funny. I, 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 I must uh, shamefully admit that even though I know Qbert, I, I, I haven't actually played the game. But um, the treble ch change in, in shape and, and, and the way they look very much. So the, the base form that they have uh, is, is one thing, but later through the, with, with the Mundo and, 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 and the art team, we really came up with many very cool looking ways in which they mutate. So the, the way they look uh, changed quite a lot. So in, in this case, for instance, in the video, we're still seeing him rather similar to the uh, initial form but he already has two stack mutations, now it's going to be three, so he has the grasshopper legs, he has the fat body, uh, the, the, the storage body basically, the, the larger body which allows you to store more, more, more items, and now he has the, this l nice little fur coat which allows him to explore in the, in the cold biome. So as, as the Trebum uh, start mutating with more and more, more parts, you, you get to have some really odd looking ones. Uh, I, I, I don't think, uh, uh, I mean, it would take quite a while to see how they look with all the different combinations and, 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 and the beta has only some of the yeah, mutations, not all, all of them. I think people would be surprised with how some of them look. Yes, they're very unique. They're awesome. And, and to address the elephant trebum look in the room, we have read the Rock Paper Shotgun article and we understand that people say they look like willies. We know, but you hear it here. This is inspiration. And there have been design meetings about this question. So you know now, this is why, this, why they look the way they do. Adorable <laughs> trebums. <laughs> yes, that was, a that was a topic that came up. It was a very interesting one. Not, yes. not a very usual, not a very usual conversation you have when you're doing game development. Like, exactly. does this make people too nervous? And it's like, oh. <laughs> Exactly. Okay, so another one from El Fideo Rubio. What's, if, what is one of the lessons, if any of them, that you implemented from your previous game that made it into the Eternal Cylinder? Hmm. Interesting. Are there rocks? Are there rocks? I've asked you if there's spoilers in here. Did anything from Rock of Ages make it? Uh, Rock of Ages. Well, I, I do think that one of the, probably the clearest uh, thing that uh, is Rock of Ages inspired is that uh, at some point when we were making the game, the, the Trebum, we needed them to run faster. And it was like, okay, running fast is cool, but rolling is cooler. So yeah. we had been, I think this is during the development still or shortly after the development of Rock of Ages 2. Uh, so yeah, the rolling part came in as a really a great, great, great uh, choice because uh, I think that if, if, if we would have gone for something like making the Trebum just simply sprint or run faster and, and, and sort of use the same kind of physics that they do for running. Uh, you wouldn't have that duality of control, which is how it feels sometimes to navigate the environments. 
Uh, I, I usually have a lot of fun just simply rolling into ramps and, and, and gaining speed and jumping around uh, to explore the levels. And I, and, and I think it's a, it, it's, it's a really fun uh, part of uh, also the, the escaping the cylinder part. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I think is worth noticing that is something that we got definitely from a previous project. Uh, it's not maybe our most popular game, but definitely one uh, one that a lot of people really like, which is um, uh, the Deadly Tower of Monsters. For those who have played it, it's kind of a sci-fi sort of comedy game that's uh, about this... Um, it, it, it tries to portray the video game as being a cheesy uh, movie, like from the 1960s, 1970s, so you, and the whole game happens with narration at the same time that you're playing the game. And the narration, the narration in that game is done by the director of the movie, who's doing like a, like a the director's commentary of the movie which is actually the game and that was a lot of fun it was a it, it was an, an an aspect that we we came up for that game in particular and i remember that um at some point in development during the eternal cylinder when we were at a point where the game was very difficult to lead players to understand what they're supposed to do because you're in an alien you're in this alien world and everything is alien, and, and, and it's very difficult to give just visual cues to the player. You're supposed to go here, you're supposed to do that, and this is kind of the what you should be doing. And for a very long time, uh, for us, one of the biggest challenges was leading players to areas of interest in what they should be doing. So El Mundo came up with a brilli brilliant idea of, well, what if we just uh, do something similar to what we did in Deadly Tower, but obviously this is going to be a different tone because uh, of... Of, uh, of the style of the game. And that's how basically the narrat narrator was born. It tied in very well with the story, which I'm not going to spoil anything about why there's a narrator, but the, it's not, it's, it's part of the story. It's, it's part of the universe of the game. So, so yeah, that, that was something also that we learned from previous uh, titles and, and past experiences. Yeah, it's an interesting balance of like cute, adorable, and like deadly and serious. And I feel like the story itself is pretty serious. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty deep story for something where you, you're looking at your cute trebums. So it's a lovely contrast. Hopefully people enjoy that when they get to play the whole game. Um, they probably can't see that as much in the first chapter, but it is, is a very cool part. Correct. Okay, um, for those who are wanting a little fighting and, and wanting to know more about if the Trebums are, are able to defend themselves, they've asked, is there combat situations either between the Trebum or between creatures and other creatures? How does combat work, if at all, in this game? There are some mutations that allow you to actually kill creatures and defeat them. There are mandatory confrontation against certain creatures in the game some specific checkpoints um so there will be more of that uh, as the game progresses but people shouldn't expect the game to become as the game progresses a sort of more action oriented game where you're supposed to kill a lot of creatures or or um, sort of overpower the enemies because uh, one of the things that happens in, in, in the game is that uh, chapter one has predominantly the what we call alien savanna biome but the other biomes which are more prominently uh, a part of chapters two, three and four are um different and different creatures start uh, appearing and some of them are similar to some creatures that you see in the savannah biome which are very like you can walk by them and they're not really much of a threat and they're they're actually maybe more afraid of you than, the, than you are afraid of them but there are some pretty nasty ones like in the first biome and some pretty large ones um so it's always a a game that's going to be a little bit about discovering what the creatures are, what they do, how they behave. Uh, 
is this a good creature? Is this a bad creature? Um, should I be afraid? Should I run away from it? Uh, but yeah, there are a few instances that allow you to have some fights in, in the game. And there are mutations that you can, if you collect them and you sort of try to specialize more in, in them, you might have more chances of killing creatures, but you could go pretty much uh, through the whole game without having to kill, except the mand mandatory uh, sort of uh, confrontations. You could go pretty much more playing the game more on a survival uh, mechanic, using the survival mechanics. Okay. Um, Smile James had asked this in Discord. I want to ask it here too. Are there many creatures that have male and female in different shapes and colors? I think you know, maybe I can think of a couple, but can you name some of the creatures and do they have like, you know, male, female creatures? We wanted to do much more of that. And the bit, like the, the, the amount of creatures that we were going to do to the game was originally, we, we started noticing it was like, wow, this is becoming a little bit overwhelming. So um, there, uh, so for instance, the, the floating one, I don't remember the name, the official name, we call it the piglet, the one that floats and, and sort of stomps you with the gas. Um, I'm sorry, Jonas, I, I, do, I never, we always talk about the, the, the creatures in there with their develop, developer bird? names. I, I really need to memorize the, the actual names because it's kind of silly. <laughs> I think it's an oinky furt. I remember that because it sounds like furt. Yeah, 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 the Onkifort, the Onkifort. Yeah, 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 perfect. Uh, in that case, you have the ones that go on the nests uh, and the ones that, uh, the other ones. You, so you, in that, those case, you have the male and the female. You also have the uh, Tongle Grop, the Tongle, tongle Groplet, and the Glick Ball, which are supposed to be like a evolutionary stages of, not evolutionary, sorry, a growth stage um, of that specific creature where the little ones, the ones that lick, that, that we call the, the lickers, they, they just move around with their tongue and they're totally um, harmless. Though I, 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 I'm wondering if anyone in the chat has noticed that if you, you encounter a group of them and you pick one up, the other ones will come at you and they're, they're, they'll try to jump, jump at you. And they actually like knock knock you down they they they're not really dangerous at all but we we do have like these little tiny uh interactions that we knew most people or a lot of people were probably never going to realize uh another one of those i'm sorry i'm going a little bit off topic but for instance the one that looks like a snail the creature that looks like a snail if you actually stand behind behind it and you shoot an ingredient in front of it, but but you stay be behind it where you can where, where it can't see you. It will open the shell. It will and it will it will go out to try to eat the ingredient that you you throw at it. And you can actually get the uh, you can get like a pearl from inside the the the, the snail, and and that gives you a shiny skin mutation, which is mostly which is just makes you pretty, kind of glittery looking, and it's kind of cool. But uh, I haven't seen anyone sort of uh, uh, until now to sort of figure out some of those. So we did add some kind of neat interactions that are kind of secret. So uh, going back to the, to the question, yes, we, we, we wanted to do have much more of that. Uh, maybe we might, we might add more different versions of the creatures, maybe in the future or something like that. But uh, I think anyone who has seen the game will realize that this is not really a game where you can have like a base enemy, which um, most enemies are a variation of like a bipedal creature or a, or a like a standard creature. Each one is its own thing. Uh, it's a, been a pretty big challenge to have all these very, very different creatures which have different ways of walking different ways if they fly they, they don't all, all move the same so each one is, is a challenge of its own okay uh jimas gibi asks almost every creature in the game is round or rolls around this is true 
um, like the cylinder itself. The only exception seems to be the cubic trepum. Is that a design choice? Um, I mean, you can roll with a cubic trepum. Uh, I think some people would have been amused if we would have made him move like the block of ages of Rock of Ages. <laughs> uh, if, for those who don't know, in Rock of Ages, for one of the April Fools, we actually did uh, added to. I think this for was for Rock of Ages too. Yeah, we did a block of ages, and it was this horrendous giant square of concrete that uh, you start using it and it moves terrible. It's impossible to control it. It, it, it has the same ball, f like 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 the same movement physics than the other boulders in the game, but it's a square. And you try moving it in any direction, and it'll do. It has a mind of its own. It like really goes bonkers anyway. So people liked it so much that they asked us to please put it in the game. Don't 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 keep it out of the game. So we we, we eventually had to give it some advantages. I think it's super strong, and if it hits the door of the gate, it does more damage. So well, I, I'm go going on on an tangent with a, a different game. So in this game, we we wanted to have the cube shaped body and it's more a puzzle uh thing uh but i think people would have been <laughs> infuriated if they had to run away from the cylinder with this square shaped trebum because it would have the physics we have experience with the block shaped physics trying to roll and it's it's awful <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, we're going to wrap up the scene. So ask your last questions for Carlos, and we'll try to get them in stream. Um, let's go over some of the major questions you guys usually ask um, for this. So uh, how long will beta run for this? This will be until now to the 25th of March. Uh, yep. Yes. And uh, people are going to always ask, when is the game launch? I don't know. <laughs> we haven't. Uh, we haven't given an official. Yeah, we have not announced that yet. We so have not announced yet. We have not announced it yet. It's this year. Um, yes, <laughs> this year. So hopefully everyone will play and give us your feedback for the beta. Again, if you don't know where that is, um, we're gonna throw a link in chat. Um, it's just eternalcylinder.com and sign up. Keys go out in batches, and we have another one going out um, as soon as we get enough key requests for the third batch. So hopefully you enjoy that. Uh, okay, so anything else you guys want to ask? Oh, here's one. Oh, we're going to ask about the planets, which honestly, I think the, the sky in this game is one of my favorite things. Like sometimes I'll just sit and look at the sky with the Saturn-like planet and some of the really great tall um, plants you know, in it. Um, Gnome Skull is asking, is this planet in the same universe as Xenoclash? No. No, it's not. Uh, it, we, it did cross our mind. Uh, we did tease around a little bit with that idea, but it would have forced us to, I think, make some sacrifices in terms of what we could have done and could have shown and story-wise that weren't uh, worth. Now, in reality, the, that, that answer might be a little bit misleading to say entirely no, because the truth is that this game could be in the same universe as Call of Duty. And, and I'm saying that in a sense that you'll later understand why when you... Because um, it's just... It's, it's, it's such a far away planet and it's so distant from our world that the basically any planet or, or any game happening in, on Earth at a certain time and in space could have could be part of the same history. So, so yeah, it, 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 we're not tying it to Xenoclash as the the, the story being related to uh, to Xenoclash. Um, but yeah, yeah. Some people are requesting mod support and, and how they'd love to add like their own creatures. I honestly don't know the answer to this question, but I mean, is that something that they could ever do or is that something we're not doing? I don't know. Uh, I think that, this, I mean, there's definitely, uh, from, from our point of view, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we would want to have in the game at launch that we're, we, 
we just had to trim out because it was going to be just too much. So I think there's going to it's going to come down. This is later going to come down to what the community community requests the most. Once the game launches, we do have a pretty good uh, history of updating our games uh, with additional content. Anyone who's been, for instance, like Rock of Ages 2 was a great example of that. We did a lot of uh, additional content for that one. Um, so yeah, uh, it'll really come down to what people want the most. I'm pretty sure some things will pop up there that uh, we're sort of thinking already how we're, we're, we're going to do it, maybe post, uh, after launch, but uh, uh, Creatures, that's an interesting one. Uh, that that would be a, a good no. challenge. <laughs> well, there you hear it. So if you guys really want something, and I know a lot of people ask for like a creative mode or a free mode, uh, the more you ask, the more you join Discord, the more you talk to us in social, the more we can know that that's really what you want for later like post-launch stuff. So. There you go. We have a, we have a feedback and suggestion place already. So put it in there, and, yep. and maybe someday we'll see. Battle Royale with cylinders? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, we we do have the blue dome. I, I, one of the fears we had at the beginning: so so many people play Fortnite and uh, other games where you have like a dome and you're not supposed to cross it. That people would reach the dome and say, uh, "I'm not supposed to go there because I'll die on the other side." <laughs> so Battle Royale has come up. As a suggestion, <laughs> a couple of times. Great. Great. Oh, you guys. Okay, so I think we're going to wrap up um, now, and we're going to try to do this every couple of weeks. So we'll notify you in social, um, Twitter at Eternal, Eternal Cylinder. We have a Reddit page as well, and Discord, of course. So if you want to you know, follow us here at uh, Twitch, we'll make sure that you get a notification next time too. And uh, of course, you can continue asking questions uh, even after the stream. So thank you guys for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, you can push the button. <laughs>